Bulginaka, do you know that cybercrime is becoming a growing problem in Fiji? Cybercrime is defined as a crime in which a computer is the object of the crime, such as hacking and spam. Cybercrime is also cyberbullying and using fake profiles to cause panic and spread false news. If you're involved in this or know anyone who's committing these crimes, report them immediately. I'm Polly. And I'm Peter. We host the Traffic Jam Show on City FM. From 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. every weekday. Do, do the, the right, right thing. In this bulletin, 300 cases of dengue, 40% drop in foreign investment, and road damage surveys challenging. From the studios of FBC Suva, Atera Lendua. Around 300 cases of dengue fever have been recorded following the two recent tropical cyclones. The Ministry of Health is expected to release updated figures this Friday as laboratories are still testing samples from the divisions. Health Minister Dr. Ifremi Wangai Nambete confirms that apart from the three deaths due to leptospirosis, there are more cases of the bacterial disease. Dr. Wangai Nambete says the gene expert testing kits have been of great help in accurately and efficiently detecting these diseases. Because we have the ability to test those that, uh, that may have the syndromes, they actually being tested. So we're actually able to pick up a lot more. The Ministry of Employment has called on employers and employees to have a mutual understanding given immense traffic delays in the central division. Many employees facing peak time traffic have been reporting to work late. Minister Pravin Kumar says the employees should be given the opportunity to cover the hours. FBC News had earlier received reports that some people have been on the road for almost three hours during peak hours while traveling along the Suvanosori corridor. So what they need to do is to cover up. They can cover that loss of hour during lunch hour or maybe in the afternoon. That will solve the problem. So there has to be a mutual understanding between the employer and the employee. Fiji's foreign direct investments in Fiji are forecast to drop by 40%. Investment Fiji Director Craig Strong says this is a direct consequence of the pandemic. Strong adds the downturn since mid-2020 has driven them to initiate strategies and continue to engage with potential investors and exporters at the global level. He is optimistic investments will rebound to some state of normalcy. If you look at um, Investment Fiji and, and the, the projects that we've been registering, um, we're about on par. So um, if you compare year on year, uh, 2019 versus the 2020, we're about 40% down on, on foreign direct uh, investment projects. So we're, we're, on, we're on par with, with the global trend at the moment. More than 37,000 hectares spread over 20 districts have been identified for an emission reduction program. Minister for Economy Aya Said Kayum says this includes Vitilevu, Bonolevu and Taviuni. Said Kayum says there is also potential to expand to other areas that express interest. Fiji is among 19 participating countries accepted for funding under the World Bank's Carbon Fund. These activities include the establishment of forests on degraded land, sustainable management of designated timber production forests, the total protection of intact existing natural forests, the incorporation of trees into farming and agricultural systems, and the promotion of forest-based livelihood ventures. The Fiji Roads Authority has yet to complete 20% of road surveys in the interior of Vanuolevu. Infrastructure Minister Tony Sumati says this is due to the continuous rain in the north. Sanyan Mboila reports. Road rehabilitation in the western and the northern divisions is 75% complete following tropical cyclone Yasa, while the eastern division is at 85%. When you try to reinstate crossings in particular, there's another flood and it washes it away. And I've seen this myself in Vanuolevu uh, soon after Yasa and again last week. Usamati says hundreds of personnel have been deployed to repair damaged roads. About 110 delivery personnel and 800 contractor personnel trying to make sure that they can re-establish these roads. Uh, so some of these people are working 10 to 12 hours a day. Some of them are working seven days a week. 
Opposition MP Saloti Ronro questioned the safety of people using bypass roads in the north. What kind of um, safety, safety initiatives or programs that in there to, to ensure uh, the safeguard of the general traveling uh, public? Uh, from uh, Lambasa to Nambuwalu and vice versa. Usamate says certain limitations have been put in place for people to follow. There is some limitations on that road. There is one crossing there that has a limit of around 10 tons. So that's obviously going to limit the volume of uh, cargo that we can move along that road. The Fiji Roads Authority is working around the clock and will only allow motorists to use the roads when it's safe. Sainian Mboila, FBC News. Registered market vendors have threatened to operate from the roadside if informal markets are not removed. Local government minister Pramila Kumar says vendors have been writing to her ministry expressing disappointment and questioning why the municipal councils are allowing some to operate from the roadside. The issue came to light after roadside vendors ignored repeated notices to dismantle and remove their stores. So... They've also threatened municipal councils that if you're not going to stop the roadside vendors, they're going to also go out on the road and they'll start selling their vegetables. The minister says they offered to register the vendors and provide proper facilities, but they refused. Flying Fijians Center Semi Randranra is raising awareness and funds for the thousands of Fijians affected by tropical cyclone Yasa and Ana. There's also good news for local athletes as three sports can now qualify for the Olympic Games through national competitions. Team Fiji Chef de Mission Patrick Bauer says swimming, athletics and archery will be able to use their national meets as qualifying events. Bauer says Due to the pandemic and travel restrictions, most athletes are not able to travel abroad for qualifiers. Overseas qualifying events for karate, judo and sailing are still being discussed. As we all well know, under the conditions that we have, it's been very difficult for a lot of the uh, national federations to get their competitions going, particularly those who were not able to get out of the country who don't have enough teams on the ground to offer them that kind of competition that is really needed for this level of competition at the Olympic Games. Fiji football captain Roy Krishna continues to score goals this season in the Hero India Super League. Krishna scored again this morning after his ATK Mohan Bagan threw a penalty to help his side to a 2-0 win over Bangalore FC. Marcelino Pereira doubled the lead just before half time with a stunning free kick from the edge of the box. As part of their Super Rugby pre-season, the Blues have taken 70 staff and players on a road trip like no other. Expect a fine afternoon with a chance of scattered showers and thunderstorms. A trough of low pressure north of Fiji is expected to bring more rain from tomorrow. That's FBC News Now. Join us again at 7 p.m. for our major bulletin. For news you can trust, get the facts from FBC's TV, radio and digital news at fbcnews.com.fj. Take care and good afternoon. हमारे खूबसूरत देश बीजी में चाइल्ड अब्यूज की घटनाएं आए दिन बढ़ रही हैं। क्यों बच्चों का मासूम बचपन अब्यूज का शिकार हो जाता है अपने बच्चों की सुरक्षा का खास ख्याल रखें। उनसे बातचीत करें उनके दोस्तों के बारे में जानें। आज के बच्चे देश का भविष्य है मैं दीप्ति और मैं मोनिश आपके हम सफर 
शामिल हो जाए हमारे साथ मंडे टू फ्राइडे फाइव फोर्टी फाइव आई एम सी टेन आई एम तक रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन आरोप